So with this, I want to um, move over to, um, to talk about Scott Griffith, who, who we're honoring tonight, who was successfully able to maneuver his way through the financial markets, um, and successfully, um, just as you many of you may know, have a successful IPO. Um, and, and before we had an early reception to hear the challenges that, that were put on him to get each step of the way and actually raise different amounts of money, but it also sounded like as he put the case forward, he was able to actually begin um, to convince people of that and raise continuously and more and more amounts of capital and reinvestment of the same capital because of the progress that he was making. When we first started to think about doing an award like this for the showcase, which for those of you who have not been here before, this is the first time we've ever done this, we didn't just say we want an award and we're going to do this and we'll just, you know, who, who should we give it to? We really gave it a lot of thought. We didn't want it to be just another award where we may pick some, you know, who's the most known business leader in Boston today and we'll just give them the award. Um, we wanted it to start to blend this idea of how one thinks about the private sector and social impact, um, but that also had a significant important level of success as just a straight off business. So what we did is we went out and we actually um, surveyed about 40 people in our community and we just said, here's what we're looking for and we'd like you to send in any recommendations. And sincerely, Scott's was the only name that came up multiple times on there. The challenge was that we actually didn't really know that we knew anyone that knew Scott until we actually had to go back to the people and say, well, who can actually make the introduction? Um, and it was actually Howard Wolk, um, um, who's, who's a member of my board and one of the uh, host committee chairs um, who made the introduction and, and Scott um, was kind enough to come over to office and check us out, I think would probably be the way that um, the meeting went. Um, but it was, it was really a meeting of the minds. I mean, it was really quite a special meeting, at least that I felt, where it was clear there were aligned values and aligned purpose just doing it in different ways, which I thought was um, pretty wonderful. I had the, the great opportunity to sit down with Scott for a couple of hours, learn a little bit more about his background and, and, and growing up in Pittsburgh and really beginning to think about sort of the role that cities can play. And um, his father had a lot of involvement in government and saw the challenges the government has in actually moving the dial, um, but also the, the, the positive ways in which they could revitalize Pittsburgh. And it was clear that you know, he had this um, immense passion for change, but was going to go out and do it in the private sector. And, and as he said to me, um, he just can't imagine a better job description than the one that he has now to be able to run Zipcar, where I mean, I think the fundamental hope and aspiration there, particularly with the public offering it, is how do you really take this thing to scale, make people a lot of money, um, have a profitable company, but also fundamentally have some sincere social impact at the same time of the way people live. So for those of you who don't know Scott, let me just tell you a little bit about Zipcar. Um, and this is where I'll sort of read the piece here to make sure I get it right. Um, but he's been at the helm since 2003, which is quite a while. And he's been steering Zipcar to, to be in first place as the world's largest car sharing service. And through a successful initial public offering just last month, it now provides instant, affordable mobility to more than 400,000 people in 14 major metro areas and at more than 200 college campuses in the US, Canada, and the UK. This is what I found interesting about um, uh, the, the soundbite I was given. With a commitment to innovation, collaboration and customer experience, Scott has fostered the emergence of car sharing as a new transportation category and changing urban life as we know it. And that, that, that's pretty fundamental game-changing business that he gets to run. So it's my pleasure now to award Scott Griffith the first ever Social Innovation Forum Business Innovator Award. Thanks. Thank you. Wow. There you go. And there's a mm -hmm. I thought it was just going to be a piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that. This is too. awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they asked me to keep my comments down to about an hour, so I'll <clears throat> I know we're running a few minutes behind, so I'll try to cut it back a little bit. Um, it, this is really an honor, um, and, and I, I want to say thank you very much for asking me to stand up and, and take this award. Um, it seems like when we first talked about this, I think it was late last summer when we first met, um, we, we timed the IPO and the award pretty well. 
Uh, so, um, you know, I'd like to think that we actually did, did all that by design. Um, it's really great to be here with a lot of friends uh, that are here, and, um, and I especially want to uh, say thank you to <coughs> my lovely wife who's here in the front, Lori. Um, Lori, uh, along with uh, many other people, have been huge supporters of the company and of me, and she's given me the opportunity to, to go off and follow uh, my passions at Zipcar uh, and given me the time to do that. And um, as my partner in uh, the, the other corporation, Griffith Incorporated, um, uh, keeps things running pretty well. Um, so thank you, honey, for being here. Um, one thing that happens when you turn public is uh, all of a sudden the PR team hands you scripts to read from. Uh, and so I'm going to stick pretty close to this because uh, I, I, I came in and, and thinking about a couple things that I should probably pass on uh, after eight years at Zipcar. And <clears throat> what I want to wa talk about is what, what I refer to as uh, the most important innovation of all. Uh, and I think uh, hopefully it's, it's instructive for some of you, uh, and I'll just talk for that about a few minutes. Um, I first want to thank uh, uh, Root Cause and, and the, the whole team here. I think your, your innovations, uh, how you're thinking about, um, about applying resources in a very different way uh, itself is very innovative. Uh, and you're, you're one, of the, um, one of the unknown secrets in town, and I'm glad you're having this event. Uh, and I'm, I'm uh, honored to take this award to help raise awareness of, of, the, of the work that you're doing. Um, and on behalf of the whole team at Zipcar, I really want to thank you for, for the award. Um, we've been getting a lot of recognition, um, as you pointed out, about our, our IPO, uh, and we've created uh, great shareholder value. In fact, one of our very first investors is sitting up here in the front row, and um, she looks pretty happy right now. So <laughs> uh, try to keep it that way, Jean. Um, it's really great to be uh, recognized for, for Zipcar's success um, uh, about uh, shareholder value, but tonight it's even better to be recognized for the social value that I think we, we brought to many of the cities that we operate in. Uh, that's talked about a little bit less. Uh, hopefully over time we can keep telling that story uh, through events like this. Uh, and it's really one of the really primary reasons I took the job. I really saw that early on in a very small company and um, that changing the world with disruptive and innovative ideas uh, isn't really all that easy. Um, and I really salute the dedication of all the participants that are going to give their presentations later. My hope is that um, my remarks tonight are going to be helpful for you uh, and maybe give you uh, some instructive and roadmap um, for your future as well. Um, <clears throat> going back to 2002, when I first took the job, I was approached by the company uh, with the opportunity to take over what was really a very struggling uh, a company at the time. Uh, it was a small startup, had this crazy idea that we were going to park cars around cities and that people in cities would actually ditch their cars uh, and start to use zip cars instead. Uh, it was certainly a big idea, but a crazy one uh, back then. Um, I was immediately attracted to the idea because it really took three different things that I have a lot of passion about and have for my, my whole career. Um, technology, uh, transportation, I started my career at the Boeing Company, um, and innovative business models. Um, and I, I think sometimes we confuse uh, invention uh, and innovation. And this company did a little bit of both, uh, really invented something that was very different, but then created an innovative business model uh, to make it work. And I think uh, to do that and combine that <clears throat> in a way that helps address very big social problems in cities, um, congestion, pollution, affordability, uh, high cost of living um, in our cities was a, a really big idea. And I was very excited about the opportunity to, to, to make it a big company. Um, during my diligence on the company, I remember thinking to myself, uh, this is maybe an opportunity to achieve um, lasting positive impact. Uh, and so it wasn't just about shareholder value. Even when I was in the interview process, I really wanted to see if this company could, could have the profound impact that some of our instincts were telling us um, it could do. Um, and so in 2003, when I took the job, my intuition was that we could create something that was bigger than all of us. Um, and I took the CEO job, my personal goal, was to both build a big company uh, and also drive longer-term social change in our cities. Um, and, uh, and, you know, that sounded a little crazy. I'm, I'm pretty sure, in fact, I remember back at the time in, in early 2003 that some of my friends who I'd gone to business school with in Chicago, uh, when I told them what I was doing, I, 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 I'm sure they thought I was crazy um, at the time. And uh, I remember some of those early days of trying to raise money. And no one actually laughed when I was in the room, but I'm, I'm pretty sure when I left the room, there was a lot. There were a few chuckles, and you know that Zipcar guy. Uh, but you know, we what we did was we started off and said, let's let's create a big mission. This is a big idea company, uh, and big idea companies need a bold vision and a bold mission. And created a mission statement that simply says to enable simple and responsible urban living. 
Um, and then we tied that in with a vision statement that said, we envision a world where there are more car sharers than car owners. Uh, that's a bold statement for a company that had uh, a very, very light revenue line at the time. Um, and, and we also tried to really craft a, a set of core values in the company, uh, one of which is have an impact. Out of five core values, uh, one of our five core values reads very clearly, have an impact. Uh, and I, I felt very personally attached to that. Uh, and I'm also honored to have many of the members of the leadership team uh, here uh, and, and friends that have been around the company uh, for a while to, to be here and, and accept the award uh, on behalf of all of them as well. Um, and the thing that I found interesting as time went on was uh, we had these big ideas, the mission, the vision, some great core values. That actually ended up being sort of the easy part. Um, uh, really over eight years, we really had to focus on building this innovative business model, and that became um, a challenging. We tried different pricing models. We changed the fleet, different location methodologies. We upgraded our technology uh, many times. We're still doing that. We announced today the, the launch of our Android app for Android users uh, to make reservations and use our service. Uh, all the way, we were trying to make life easier for our members. Uh, we truly thought this was a lifestyle brand. This was not a car company. Uh, this was a game changer if it succeeded in, in getting people to think very differently about uh, affordability and livability in cities. And the fact that we had cars to do that uh, was uh, a piece of the business model, but it certainly wasn't um, the only part of it that we thought about. Uh, we really thought lifestyle was an important part of that. So we went off and uh, now have opened uh, 14 cities, 230 universities in our network, um, about uh, actually uh, about 560,000 members now, um, and really started to create some, some great change and gone from 2 million in revenue when I started to about 200 million today. Uh, so for that 100-fold increase, we've, we've seen about 5,000 members when I joined now, as I said, about 560,000 members today. Um, we've reduced car ownership in cities. We've had a profound impact there. Uh, every zip car replaces about 15 to 20 personal cars. Uh, we know that through surveys with our members. As, as uh, members, when they join, choose to sell a car often, or they're maybe in the process of buying a car, thinking about buying a car, and they use our service instead and choose not to buy a car. Uh, and the impact that that's having on households uh, has really added up. Every household that has chosen not to buy a car, sold, sold a car on average, is telling us they're saving about $7,000 a year uh, after they spend on Zipcar versus car ownership, and a lot of that's going back into the local economy. So um, we've decreased carbon emissions at the same time and, and, and made uh, life more affordable for, for many, many thousands of members. Um, uh, and uh, what's most exciting recently is a little, uh, a little more than uh, three weeks ago, we became the first public car sharing company in history. Uh, and uh, I, I thought that was a, a wonderful event. And now with our qu first quarterly call coming next week, I'm uh, <laughs> thinking more about whether that was a good idea. But we'll see how that goes. Um, so uh, we've gone uh, now about 7,000 percent in growth since I joined the company. And uh, the thing I want to sort of focus on as I close here is um, to point out that, you know, when you grow a company 7,000 uh, percent over eight years, you, you can't grow 15 percent a year yourself and stay up in that environment. You can't, can't survive. Uh, and so um, what I've learned over the years is from time to time I've, I've had to really bend my own personal growth curve uh, and think differently about leadership, about communications with our employees or with our zipsters or our, our, our folks that drive the cars. I've had to create a discontinuity in my own leadership style, my own personal style. Mm -hmm. Uh, in cases, and at the end, I've really I've had to innovate myself, um, and I think uh, to me, I've found this to be the most important innovation of all. Um, it's something that ha doesn't happen all that often, uh, and I'll talk a few more minutes about that now. Um, the reason I, I think I first had that idea about periodic self innovation was um, uh, a life altering cancer diagnosis um, back in the 1990s. Um, after I learned about uh, getting cancer. Uh, began to realize that uh, my experience with cancer was probably going to change uh, my life in many ways that I hadn't anticipated when I first found out about it. Um, during many months of chemotherapy and radiation treatment uh, by the amazing folks at Mass General's Cancer Center, a few of who are here tonight, thank you guys for coming, um, I started thinking about what kind of person uh, I wanted to be uh, when cancer was in my rearview mirror. And uh, I started thinking about um, what changes in my life I thought were going to be important as I, uh, as I uh, started to feel and act differently when cancer was behind me. Um, it, it really helped me realize that whether we have four weeks or four months or 40 years, um, that it's really important to think about what impact we want to have uh, and who we want to do that with. Um, and I really started to think very differently about the people I wanted to be around 
the kind of company that I wanted to be part of. Uh, and I realize now that that was really a gift um, that was part of my cancer experience. And it was uh, the lasting positive impact out of having cancer. And uh, when I found um, uh, that, you know, that Zipcar could be part of that, it was like this was the company I was made for. Uh, and I, I really, uh, I only wish that all of you could find that as well because it makes you very happy uh, when you feel that. And I, I think I had that insight and I started to really think about um, what did I want to stand for? Um, who did I want to be with? Um, uh, who was I going to surround myself with? And that's why Zipcar became such an important uh, work for me because I felt like uh, my path had crossed a few years later after this cancer diagnosis into a company um, that was really going to have this kind of impact both on me and on and on cities and on members that we worked with. So <clears throat> um, I think to innovate yourself, you, you need to take risks. I'm not an advocate that you go out and take risks every day, but if you're going to edge outside your comfort zone, you have to take some personal risks, and you have to be willing to innovate yourself and, and sort of throw out um, a lot of the basics of how you do, uh, how you conduct yourself as a leader, a manager, uh, a, an academic in some cases. Uh, and really, in my opinion, um, it's the most important part of your personal journey as an entrepreneur um, or as a, a social innovator, a leader, a husband, a wife, um, a partner, or a community leader. Um, I think this idea of innovating yourself periodically is one that certainly helped me a lot, and I think it's the most important innovation of all, and I wanted to, to share that with you tonight. Uh, in closing, I wanted to point out also that uh, I'm a huge fan of, uh, my wife knows this, of a, a New York Times columnist named um, David Brooks. Um, he wrote a column last year uh, and uh, summarized a concept he was talking about in a book, and he said, the key to happiness is not being rich. It's doing something arduous and creating something of value and then being able to reflect on the fruit, fruits of your labor. Um, I can tell you from personal experience that achieving success and being a good leader uh, is indeed something that's arduous. Um, but if you can create something of value uh, and you're blessed with the ability to reflect on that creation, uh, that's all any of us can really ask for. Uh, and that's what I feel great about. And tonight's one of those moments of reflection for me. Um, and it's a wonderful opportunity to review something powerful that uh, with the Zipcar team uh, as uh, I've had a hand in creating and I'm really thankful for, for uh, the organization for recognizing me and the company for, for doing that. Um, so uh, that's uh, the end of my story. I want to say thank you again to Andrew and the entire team. Um, wish you the best of luck tonight for those of you that are participating directly uh, in the presentations and uh, great success in your own personal and, prof and uh, professional innovation uh, and uh, have a great evening. Thanks very much for the award.